In this video, I will show you how to work with freeform reports in Google Analytics 4 with several practical examples. Hey, my name is Julius and welcome to the Analytics Mania YouTube channel, where I teach people how to work with Google Tag Manager and Google Analytics. So if you want to stay up to date with GA4, then consider subscribing to this channel. When it comes to reports of Google Analytics 4, I spend most of my time in explorations. It's the place where you can build custom reports and analyze the data. In today's video, we will take a look at one of the exploration techniques called freeform exploration. This video is not only about theory. We will also take a look at several practical examples. So let's dive in. To get started, you have to log in to your Google Analytics 4 property and then go to explore. Here you will see different exploration techniques, but to get started with freeform, you should choose either blank or freeform. Let's go with this option. And here you will see a pre-filled sample report. The interface of explorations is split into three parts. The first column is variables, the second column is tab settings, and the third column is the output of the generated report. In the variables column, you can rename your exploration name that will be visible in the list of explorations. Then you can select date range. You can click right here and then select from the date picker or choose from several templates. And then you will be able to include segments, dimensions, and metrics that you're going to use in this particular exploration. If you want to use some metric or dimension or segment, it has to be first included in the variables column right here and you can add them by clicking plus icon next to each section. By clicking plus icon next to segment, you will open a segment builder. Then if you click plus next to dimensions or metrics, you will open a list of available dimensions or metrics that you want to include. If you want to add a particular dimension or metric, you need to click checkbox next to it and then click import. So for example, if I add device and then click import, the device dimension will appear right here. Dimension basically is like an attribute about a user, a product, a page, or something else that you want to display in your reports. Dimension in the report is displayed right here because that is currently the selected dimension right here. The metrics are the numbers that count something. For example, in this case, we are counting active users. You can also choose from event count, number of transactions, and then there is a bunch of other metrics available in this list. And if you want, you can expand a particular list and see what is available. If you see some metrics or dimensions disabled, it means that you cannot use them in combination of other dimensions that you have currently added to your exploration. The tab settings is responsible for the look of the report. And depending on different exploration techniques, for example, funnel exploration or path exploration, the settings available right here will also be different. In this video, I will be focusing only on freeform technique and I will look only at these particular settings. If you did some changes and you want to undo them, you can do that by clicking this undo button right here, or you can also go then and click redo. You can also share this report with others, but currently when I'm recording this video, sharing the report does not mean that other people will be able to collaborate. Instead, they will be able to see the report and if they want to edit it, they will have to make their own local copy of that report and then edit it in their account. Currently, I'm working on the official Google Merchandise Store account. So I have some limited permissions, but if you're working on your own property, then you will also see a button that lets you download this report to places like Google Sheets. Speaking of visualization, usually I find myself working with a table, but if you need, you can choose from other options, for example, GeoMap, where you will see the map and obviously that depends on what kind of breakdown do you select right here. For example, country, subcontinent, city, and so on. Then you can also select what is the metric that is used in this report. But I will leave the rest of the visualization types for your own discovery. Now let's go back to the table. As I've said, the dimension is displayed in the first column right here, and that is because it is added right here. If you want to remove the dimension, you can click this X right here. And if you want to add dimensions, you have several options. You can click right here and then you will see a list of dimensions that are included right here. If you're looking for something that you don't see here, you will need to add that dimension by clicking this 
plus icon right here. Another option would be to drag that particular dimension here. And the third option would be to just double click any of these dimensions. For example, I can click on country, and then I can click on device. And as you can see, two dimensions were added. And here are different combinations of them. The device doesn't show anything. So let's use the device category instead, and then remove the device from here. And we can see that most users are using desktop and they're coming from the US. So this is one way how you can view the report where you have two dimensions and two separate columns. But there's another way which is useful if the second dimension does not have very many unique values. So instead of using device category in the rows, you can instead drag it to columns. And then you will see that each row represents a particular country, but then each column shows the active users based on the device category. So this cell shows traffic from United States that is using desktop. This cell right here shows traffic coming from Japan, and that is using tablets. Now let me remove this dimension for now. And then another option how you can compare different groups of your visitors is by using segments. You can build either your own segment by clicking this plus icon, or you can select from several suggestions that are available automatically if you select the free form exploration as your template. For example, let's say that I want to compare mobile traffic against tablet traffic. And once you do that, every segment is added as a column to your report. There's also a pivot option, but explaining it would make this video very long. So instead, you can check the description of this video where I have a link to my blog post. And in that blog post, I explain with several examples, what does the pivot mean? And what is the outcome of each option available right here? By default, at least right now, when I am recording this video, the table by default shows the top 10 rows. If you want to show more, you can set that in the show rows field. For example, we can go to 50 and then you will see those rows right here. Another thing which is not very convenient, at least right now, and I hope that maybe GA4 will fix this in the future, is that there is no convenient pagination right here where I could just switch and go to the next page. So if I want to see the other 50 countries, let's say 51st, 52nd country, then I need to set the start row right here. Because right now, the table shows countries from the first row. But if I want to go to the next page, I would then have to enter 51 because the table shows 50. And then I want to go to the 51st. And now we have other countries between 51st and 100. Now let's take a look at the nested rows. And to do that, first, we have to remove the segments, at least for now, just to make the table a bit more readable, then I will start from the first row. And then I will add a second dimension, which is device category. So now I have two dimensions, country and category. And as you can see, each row shows a unique combination, United States desktop, United States mobile, but if I switch to nested rows, then you will see United States and then a breakdown of all values of this dimension, then we have China and this breakdown, then we have India and this breakdown, then we have show column groups. And to explain that, let me quickly remove the secondary dimension, then I will use a dimension that has more unique values, not just three or four. So I could, for example, add the event name as the row dimension and then country as a column. And now we have top events and top five countries. And then we have the total count. Obviously, there are more than five countries from which we get traffic. But this option right here controls the maximum number of top dimensions. So right now there are five top countries that are displayed right here. But if I want, I can switch to let's say 10. And then I will see 10 top values. Obviously, this does not make the report very convenient to read, but just know that this option exists. Also, you could zoom out the browser to see more data. But now I will go back to five, then we have values. So this is where you can add metrics. Right now, we see just the user count or actually the count of active users. But if you want to see the number of how many times was the page view tracked or scroll event tracked, you can add another metric, which is event count, and it will be displayed right here. Next to values, we can also select the cell type. And there are three options how each cell is displayed. One is bar chart. So the wider the bar is, the larger the value is. 
but if you want, you can also switch to the plain text where you just see clear numbers, or you can switch to heat map. Darker colors mean that in context of this column, that cell has one of the highest values. And then we have filters that can limit the amount of data that is used in this report, but I will use that later in this video. If you want, you can add multiple tabs to the same exploration and those tabs can be added by clicking this plus icon and their types can be different. For example, one tab might be using freeform while the second tab might be using funnel exploration. But that's enough of the theory. Now let's go to some practical examples. So now I will just remove this dimension right here. I will, let's say, remove the event count or in fact, maybe I will just create a new freeform and we'll remove the previous one because the new one has some default settings. So the first report that I'm going to build is the landing page report. And for that, I don't need things like gender or city or region or all of these other dimensions, because at the same moment, you can have only up to 10 dimensions added to the exploration. So be aware of that. And instead, I will add a dimension by clicking this plus icon of which name is landing page click plus import. And then as a metric, I am going to use sessions because I want to see how many sessions started on each landing page. So let's go to metrics, click plus, and then enter sessions. Click checkbox, click import, and then let's add these dimensions and metrics to the report. So I will double click on landing page and I will double click on sessions. We have a bunch of not set values right here. So this might indicate some technical problems in the setup. But since I am not running this demo website and I'm not doing audit of it, I will leave this for Google to resolve. But in the meantime, if you see some values that you don't want to include in the report, you can just do the right click on them and then exclude selection. And that will create a filter and now the report is cleaner. So this is one option. Another option in this particular case is that this report right now shows the data coming from all events, not just page view events, which are directly related to the landing page, but also all other events. It might be scroll, click, and all the other stuff. So my guess here is that this not set is coming from other events which happened not on the landing page, and they are not page views. So what I would try is to add a filter that limits this report only to page view events. So I will click here, then add a filter with the event name, and then select that event name must exactly match page view. Click here, click apply. And now the report, as you can see, is much cleaner. These are the top pages where visitors started their sessions on that particular website. And most of them did that on the homepage because homepage is marked as slash. By the way, this data is coming from the official Google merchandise store. And here you can buy various Google merchandise and also you can use the site search feature to look for particular products. Google Analytics 4 is capable of tracking these events automatically and they are called view search results. So now let's go to the second example of the report where we are going to see what our visitors are looking for on a website. So to do that, I will create a new tab and I, first I will rename this to landing page report. And then here I'm going to create another free form that I will name site search. And then let's begin. So first of all, we are going to need a dimension that shows the search keyword that people used in this feature right here. We can do that by clicking the plus in the dimensions section and then looking for search term right here in the general section. Click it, click import, and then double click it to add it to the report. It will be added automatically to the rows section. Now we need to know how many times was each keyword searched. And we can do that by adding the event count to the report. Double click on event count. And now we see how many times was each keyword searched. But again, the first row is empty. And this is because again, this report is including all the data from all the events. So there are more than 2 million events that are not view search results. They might be clicks, page views, and other stuff. So we need to exclude them. And we can do that by limiting this report to just view search results event. To do that, we need to click in the filter section, click event name, and then we have to add a filter where event name exactly matches view search results and click apply. And now we have the top keywords that visitors 
we're looking for. If you want to see more of them, you can choose to see, let's say the top 100 rows. And now we can take a look at this report. And after we get familiar with the business, we can then compare and maybe identify that some keywords are actually a gap in our business. And what do I mean by that is that maybe people are looking for particular products that this online store does not offer yet. And that might be a business opportunity to provide and to offer more products that people are looking for, because this is like a cheat sheet. Your visitors are telling you what they are looking for. So why not offer them that? Now, if you compare explorations with what we had in the previous versions of Google Analytics, there are a lot of differences and there is a steep learning curve. So right now I would encourage you to play around with this interface. And first it will be difficult, but as you continue working with it, you will get used to it and eventually it will start becoming quite convenient. And that is how you can use exploration reports in Google Analytics 4. It's very different from what we had in the previous versions of Google Analytics. And it's a pretty steep learning curve, but this is something that you have to get used to. And over time, you will become better at it. If you found this video useful, hit the thumbs up button below the video because it helps me continue working on this channel. Also, if you want to learn more about Google Tag Manager or Google Analytics 4, then consider subscribing to this channel. My name is Julius, this is Analytics Mania, and I'll see you in the next video.